An estimated 2.5 million people are infected with this parasite annually. The parasite also causes about 50,000 deaths annually. However, disease caused by this parasite is described as neglected, despite the substantial impact it has on public health and the significant economic losses it causes. Join me as we learn about this parasite and the disease it causes. Welcome to my channel. If you are joining me for the first time, my name is Louisa. In this video, we will learn about teniasis. My guest, Dr. Henry Ofusu Adu, will share knowledge on this disease. Dr. Adu holds a PhD in applied parastology and will be sharing knowledge and experiences in his field from time to time on this channel. Thank you very much, Dr. Louisa Sawyer, for having me. Teniasis or infections resulting from tenia solium or tapeworm okay as a result of the consumption of pork raw or undercooked that contain the larvae of tapeworm cystisecosis however in both pigs and humans occurs as a result of the injection of the eggs of tenia solium which have been shared by an infected person and that contaminates water and other environmental sources that humans and pigs come into contact with. How does one contract tenia solium infections? From the figure, individuals who are infected with tenia solium pass out the eggs or the matured proglottis into the environment, especially in places where open defecation is common, and pigs, as a result of their free-ranging or scavenging behavior, get access to these open defecated areas, swallow these eggs, and as oncospheres are able to break the intestinal walls of the pigs and via the circulatory system they then embed in the muscles of the pigs where they develop to become the infective stage of the pigs which we call the cysticerci now this cysticerci can be in the muscles of the pigs for a long time until a human being consumes pork raw or undercooked that contain this is the cerci. Once inside the human beings, move straight in the intestines and there develop to become male and female adults. Reproduction then leads to the release of the eggs and then the life cycle continues. For infections with tapeworm, there is an issue we call neurocysticecosis, where this tapeworm can get lodged in the central nervous system, which has been identified as a major cause of epileptic seizure in developing countries of the world. Neurocysticecosis has also been identified as a hidden epidemic and arguably the most common parasitic disease of the human nervous system. In developing countries such as Ghana, tapeworm infections have been strongly associated with poverty. Three reasons could be given for this. Number one is due to non-availability of improved toilet facilities. So such people mostly resort to open defecation. But according to a study, the problem is not only poverty, but reluctance of people to use latrines even though they are provided. So such people usually result to open defecation. The second reason is due to the poor pig management practices in developing countries like Ghana. Free-ranging pigs or scavenging pigs are very common, especially along the beaches and shores of Ghana. And the third reason has to do with lack of proper slaughter points for pigs and also improper meat inspection by veterinarians. Tapeworm infections in pigs can be definitively diagnosed by identifying the tapeworm or what we call the cysticerci in the muscles of the pigs. This could be carried out in several ways. For example, through sublingual cyst inspection or what we call tank inspection, but this only gives indication of very heavily contaminated pigs. Then there is necropsy, where the dead animal is inspected for evidence of disease or the cause of death. 
And so usually the dissection is restricted to the heart, the lungs, and other masticatory organs. Then thirdly, in the laboratory, we can carry out what we call serological tests. What is the challenge in Ghana? First of all, telling a farmer to discard lightly or moderately infected pigs is a challenge. A study carried out in 2012 saw that approximately 18% of the animals at the slaughter points were infected. This underscores the importance of proper meat inspection, especially at our slaughterhouses. The second challenge has to do with religious aversion to pig or pork products by sections of Ghanaians. And so a new or a proper slaughter point for pigs is very much needed as pigs cannot be sent to the major slaughterhouses where all the other ruminants are kept. The third reason has to do with improved testing techniques, more better improved techniques like molecular and serological methods. Finally, the methods of raising pigs must be improved. Most of the pigs raised in Ghana are raised under the free range system, ostensibly as a way of cost reduction to the farmers. But nobody actually controls the pigs on what they feed on as they free range or as they scavenge. So these pigs can pick infections from the environment, contaminate themselves and also infect humans who come into contact with them. Tenia solium is a potentially eradicable disease in Ghana. Tenia solium infections that occur in pigs occur as a result of infections from humans. This means that if open defecation is prevented, free-ranging pigs will not get access to these open defecated areas, thereby preventing the infection. In endemic areas or places, where humans and animals coexist. Tenia solium or pork tape worm is known to be responsible for about 30% of epilepsy cases. While in high risk communities, it is known to be responsible for up to 70% of epilepsy cases. Share your thoughts on this topic in the comment section and subscribe for more content.